The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Welcome to our house. It's a haunted house, we admit. Haunted by strange creatures, hidden terrors, the cries of spirits, and the moans of unravaged victims. But it's a pleasant place to visit, even if you wouldn't want to live here. We're going to introduce you to a most unusual heroine. Not the sort of woman you might expect to encounter in a story of crime and violence. No, Mr. Warmer. This one is not a cop. She's been acting like a cop, but that's not what she is. Please. Oh, please let me go. I, I didn't mean any harm. Oh, no, Shooter. <laughs> You're no cop at all. What you are is a nun. <laughs> mystery drama, The Final Vow, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Rosemary Rice. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You are hearing a familiar sound at the Holy Name Convent, the sound of the Holy Sisters at their devotions. But if you had been allowed to enter the chapel and seen the faces half hidden among the folds of their wimples, you may have seen something more than sacred concentration because one of their number is missing. Sister Pamela? Sister, are you in there? Yes, I... I'm here. Come in. Oh, Sister Pamela, you've been crying. No. No, I'm all, all right. I, I'm just not feeling very well. I, I asked Reverend Mother if I could be, be, be excused this oh, morning. Oh, no, you can't fool me. I can see rivers on your cheek, Sister. Now, you've done nothing but cry for weeks. Sorry, Sister Jim, I tried. So Why can't you be happy, dear? Don't you know it's spring? Can't you feel God's love for the world when you see a day like this? It's my fault, Sister Jen. I can only blame myself. Oh, nonsense. There's no one to blame. You're young, child. Now, tears are a pleasure when you're young. Here. Let me wash your face. Sister, you're not thinking about what we spoke of the other day. I... I haven't been thinking of anything. I'm trying not to think. And have you prayed? Oh, I've prayed. I've prayed for humility, for obedience. But, but there wasn't any answer in my heart. Only silence. Do you suppose that my... Shh, child. But if I'm wrong, sister, if I truly belonged here, wouldn't I know? Wouldn't I feel it inside? Our Lord called you when you were a little girl. Almost from the day you were born. Oh, maybe it only seems that because I was raised at the holy name. Because of an accident of time and place. How can I really know, sister? Well, you mustn't talk about it now. I have much more interesting things to talk to you about. What do you mean? I didn't come here to wash your pretty little face. I came here to tell you some good news. We're going on a trip. A trip? Now, won't that be nice? 
Why, it's just what you need, I think. A nice little journey somewhere. And Reverend Mother wants to talk to you about it. That's what I came to tell you. She wants to see me now? Yes, child. Right now. Sister Pamela, have you ever heard of a man named William Michael Downey? He was a student at the Holy Name long before you were born. No, Reverend Mother, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Consider yourself fortunate. Pardon? Oh, never mind. This man, Downey, and Sister Lydia were once very close. Her affection for the man is the wonder of my life. I, I don't think I understand. Well, he's just written her a letter. It asked for some representative of the holy name to pay him a visit. Not on a spiritual errand. Well, I might as well tell you everything. The man is a known criminal. Criminal? He spent many years in prison, and far too many, I gather, out of it. His crimes have earned him a, a certain amount of material success, even a degree of false respectability. You know what I'm talking about, sister. I think so. Well, I'm sending you and Sister Jem to see him. It's only a day's journey. Now, you'll have to take the train into the city. If you left tomorrow morning, you could return by Saturday or even Friday evening. But, Reverend Mother... I'm sure the trip will do you good, sister. I know how peaked you've been lately. May I speak, Reverend Mother? Very well. There's something I've been wanting to talk to you about... Something about myself? Please, sister, not now. Oh. This errand is a duty we owe, Sister Lydia. As you know, the poor woman is dying. Yes, I, I know, but... I'd please. send someone in your place, but you know the difficulties we've had with illness. Our students are suffering and our chores are neglected. Now, we can discuss any personal problems you have on your return. Yes, Reverend Mother. Sister Therese will give you your instructions about the journey. Don't be afraid of this man, Downey. Your strength is greater than his. And, Sister Pamela, one more thing. Yes? Take good care of Sister Jem. She may not have your courage. <laughs> I've been at a railway station. <laughs> it makes me dizzy. I, um, I, I think the exit is this way. And I don't walk so fast, Chuck. Uh, uh, did uh, Sister Trey say it was very far to Mr. Downey's house? Oh, not very far. She said we could reach it by bus or taxi. Oh, uh, well... Let's, let's take a taxi, dear. I, I really am exhausted. Oh, poor Sister Jen. This is uh, a long trip for you. Well, I, I don't mind. For Sister Lydia's sake. I'm glad Mr. Downey wrote her, aren't you? I don't know. I've yet to hear anything good about Mr. Downey. Why, there's something good in every one child. you hear the chimes? It sounds like the bell in our tower. Oh, it's quite a grand house. Well, so you're here. Uh, Mr. Downey? Yeah, I'm here. Come in, sisters. I'm, uh, I'm Sister Pamela, and, um, this is Sister Jim from the Holy Name. Yeah, I know. How I know you? where you're from, sisters. Uh, come in, sit down. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I am a bit tired. <laughs> Can I offer you something? A drink, oh. maybe? No, I mean, you uh, no water or something. Well, uh, oh, not, not, not for me, thank you. Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Downey. Uh, we stopped off in a restaurant before we came here. Yeah, yeah, fine. Well, how's, um, uh, how's Sister Lydia? She's all right, but as you know, she was too ill to make this journey. Yeah. <laughs> She's a funny woman. It's 40 years since I left the Holy Name. She still writes to me. 
I got a card, an Easter card, a Christmas sweater on my birthday. I got a, I got a hunch she even mentions me in her prayers. Well, you should be very glad. Why? You think your prayers have helped me? I do, yes. Oh, and have all your prayers been successful, sister? Um, your, your home is lovely. You must be a great admirer of religious You art. haven't answered my question, sister. Prayers aren't business deals, Mr. Downey. And you can't judge them as successes or failures. <laughs> that sounds like your prayers haven't been working out so good. But then you're you're new at the game, aren't you? I mean, you look very young, sister. How long have you been at the Holy Name? I was a student there before taking my vows. I see. It was a lot easier to join the order, wasn't it? Instead of going out and facing the cold, cruel world. I'd rather not talk about me, Mr. Downey. Look, I've been through it all myself, you know. In all my years, I never found a better hideout than the holy name. Yeah, the world's a noisy, messy place full of problems. Why well, ask for trouble if you can avoid Please, it? Please, Mr. Downey. Okay, okay, sister. Look, I'll, uh, I'll get down to business. Uh, just what is your business, Mr. Downey? Well, as you can see, sister, it's art. Religious art. What? Yeah. And I got a present for Sister Lydia. There it is. Oh, oh, oh. Mr. Turney, it's St. Francis. Oh, how beautiful it is. Here, here you are. Oh, uh, That's a little heavy, but it'll fit right into that suitcase. Oh, oh, it, oh, it looks very old. Well, it's when so I heard the old woman wasn't feeling well, I thought I'd like to send her something. It should look nice in the chapel, don't you think? Oh, I, I, this is... Very kind of you, Mr. Downey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have preferred <laughs> handing it to Sister Lydia myself, but I'll be dead. <laughs> I'll be blessed if I'll set foot in that gloomy old place myself again. Yes. You would be blessed. Hey, I see it. Of course. How old is it, Mr. Downey? Oh, about five centuries. What? Mm -hmm. Comes from the Medici Palace. It was sculpted by Donatello, you know him? Donatello, of course. It must be terribly valuable. I think the word is priceless. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. It's such a magnificent... Well, gift. you you just I, tell I, Sister Lydia that little Willie Downey is sorry he never replied to her letters. He hopes this will make it up to her. You know something? Sister Jen was right about you. Hmm? Huh? About what? Well, she... She said... There was good in everyone. Let me carry the suitcase for a while, dear. It's so awfully heavy. No, no. It's all right. Now, are, are you sure about the train time? Uh, well, maybe I'd better look at the schedule again. I, I just can't figure out all those tiny little numbers, even if I could see them without my glasses. Let's see. Uh, Sister oh. Therese said there would be a train at 7.45. Oh, dear. Well, that's, that's almost an hour from now. I'm sure there must be an earlier one. <gasps> yes, here it is. The next train's at 6.39, lower level. Oh, that's only three minutes from now. We'll have to hurry. Oh, oh, dear. I, I hope we may make it. What we can do is try. Uh, can I help you, sister? What? Hey, let me help you with that suitcase. It looks pretty heavy. No, I think I can manage. Well, come to, come to think of it. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. Would you? Okay. You're going to the lower level? Yes, yes. Uh, the, to the Brownwell train, train 40. Oh. It leaves very soon, I'm afraid. Don't worry. We'll make it. Come along, Jim. Oh, thank heaven. For that young man. Oh, oh, I wish you wouldn't walk the fence. Oh, maybe this is a mistake, sister. Maybe we better wait for this time. No. Oh. Five, please, please. It's just a little ways longer, sister. Oh, can, can you see him? No. Uh-uh. The crowds are so thin. Oh, you're so thin. Oh, he can make it. He must be waiting for us at the gate. Now, there it is, gate 40. I, I don't see anyone. Perhaps he went on the train. Well, why? Why would he do that? I don't know. Why isn't he here? Oh, Charles, look. They're closing the gate. We've missed the train. Oh, where's the young man? Why isn't he here? Oh, Sister Jim, he's not here. Where could he I, be? I don't know. You don't possibly think he... No, no, no. It can't be. He, he was 
was just being polite. He, he wanted to help. Oh, child, <laughs> why did you trust him? Why? He's got to be here, Sister Jeff. He's just got to be here with the statue. <laughs> The young man isn't there. And very soon, Sister Pamela and Sister Jim will draw the only possible conclusion. That this young man was not a Boy Scout looking for his good deed for the day. That he was the kind of young man who hangs around places like railroad terminals looking for the good deal of the day. And it looks like he's managed to get one of the best deals of his life. We'll learn more when I return shortly with Act Two. Even the bells of the Holy Name Convent have a sad and hollow sound today as Sister Pamela sits with head bowed before the Reverend Mother and listens to a different kind of litany from her lips. Are you a child, an infant? God gave you a brain. Do you think your vows excused you from having common sense, did you? No, Reverend Mother. You were given a trust, sister, a sacred trust. No matter how wicked that man Downey is, his gift was an offer of repentance. I won't even speak of its material value. Please, Reverend Mother, I've said how sorry I am. Yes, I, I know you want Forgiveness. That would be simple for both of us, wouldn't it? Oh. All right, Sister Pamela. You have my forgiveness. You. Only, what shall I give Sister Lydia? Our sincere regrets. Do you know what that statue would have meant to her? To hold it in her hands, to, to know who gave it? Can't you see it? It was more than a gift to the holy name. It, it was her reward for a lifetime of devotion and faith. Well, perhaps the police will find it. I pray for that, Reverend Mother. I, it's all I pray for. We're all praying, sister. All right. What happened at the police station? Nothing, I'm afraid. They gave Sister Jem and me pictures to look at, pictures of men, criminals. We couldn't recognize the one in the terminal. Oh. Well, that lieutenant who was here, what was his name? Lieutenant Jacoby. Did he hold out any hope? Not very much. No, of course he couldn't. A thief was clever. He was probably accustomed to preying upon the innocent... And don't be too proud of that innocence, child. It isn't synonymous with virtue. Well, what next? Well, we're going back to the police headquarters this afternoon. And they're going to have us look at some men. A uh, line-up, they call it. All right, then, sister. I won't keep you any longer. Didn't you hear me? You can go. Reverend Mother... I wanted to say something. Then, please, say it. I wish to leave the order, Reverend Mother. Oh, you can't know what you're saying. I know, Reverend Mother. Sister, you're not a child. You must not respond to trouble like a child. I've thought about it. I've thought... And pray. When a child is naughty, it, it thinks of running away from home. Your home is with God, sister. You cannot run away from him. I'm not running away from God. I wish to leave the order. I'm not suited, Reverend Mother. I've, I've known that for some time. Mr. Downey was right about me. Mr. Downey? Why would anything that man said affect you? He said, some people retreat to God, advance towards him. Well, that's what I've done. I've hidden myself from the world for the wrong reasons. Is that so bad, Sister Pamela? Sometimes we do the right 
things for the wrong reasons. But I haven't been honest. Not with myself, not with you, and not with God. What happened in that terminal was like a punishment. No, sister. If you had sent someone else, the statue would be here by now in the chapel. I know. Well, it, it may yet be. We can't know the future. I... I have to leave. There's no other way. I must. <laughs> Sisters, be sure and look them over carefully. All the men you'll see on that stage have worked the same kind of crime in the past, helping women with their luggage and then helping themselves to the contents. Uh, Lieutenant Jacoby, do you think the man knows what he's told? It's true value? Oh, doubtful. His ignorance may work in our favor, so we're keeping the facts quiet. If he knew he had a statue worth a fortune, he'd make himself harder to find. Uh, but it has no price. It's an art treasure. He couldn't really sell it, could he? <laughs> There are crooks and crooks these days, sister. There are collectors who don't mind stolen merchandise, even if they can't display it openly. Just the same, we're assuming the thief won't know it's anything but a hunk of bronze. Who knows? Maybe he'll think it's a lamp. Well, we ready? Here come the boys. Lieutenant, they can't see us, can they? No, sister, but you'll see them, all right. All right, number one, step forward. Uh... He, he isn't the one, I'm sure. Step back in a place, number one. Number two. No. He's much older than the man. Do any of them look right, sister? Uh, well, let me see. Um, one, two, three, four. Wait, wait. wait that, that, that one at the end. Have we hit the jackpot? I'm not sure. I, I didn't see him for more than a second or two, but he's the same age and size. Number six, front and center. Look at him again, sister. I, I... I'm just not sure. What's your name, mister? James K. Bresson. What can I do for you? I'll ask the questions. What are you doing with yourself these days, Bresson? Still working the terminals? Oh, you got me all wrong, mister. I'm duly employed. Who would employ you, Bresson? I work for the Gramercy Printing Company over on 29th Street in the shipping department. Not snatching any more suitcases? I never snatched any suitcase. That last time was a bum rap. Well, what do you think? The voice. The voice sounds like him. Sister Jen, I never heard the voice. Do you uh, ever go to church, Bresson? Yeah, how's that? You ever do much business with nuns? <laughs> what is this? You trying to convert me? He could be. He could be the one. Sister Jim. No, no. I I don't think so, child. Now, I remember a, a much taller um, man. A much no. thinner. Bresson, you were hanging around the Union Terminal on Friday night, weren't you? Friday? Be around 6.30? No, Friday night I was with my girl. You don't believe me? Ask her. I was at her apartment, 5 o'clock to midnight. What's the name of your girl? Her name's Bess Mackin. She lives at 200 Rice Avenue. I never left her for a minute. You see, child, he couldn't be the one. Don't let an alibi fool you. I'm sure he's not the one, Sister Pamela. Now, let's not make things worse by accusing an innocent man. No. I don't want to make things worse. Well, sister? No. I guess I'm not sure after all, Lieutenant. I'm not sure about anything. I wish you wouldn't do this, Sister Pamela. I just know it's a mistake. I can't help it, Sister Jem. I have to go. I can't even recognize you, child. I've forgotten how you look in ordinary clothes. Yes, they are ordinary, Sister Jem. And maybe I am, too. Have you said goodbye to everyone? Yes. I've just seen Sister Lydia. She was very weak, but... But she still managed to ask me that question. What question was that? 
about the statue of St. Francis. She asked if it had been recovered yet. Oh, dear. Then you know that they haven't told her it was stolen. Only that it was misplaced. Yes. She still thinks they'll find it. She still believes that she'll see it before she dies. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Gunderson? Yes? I-, I was told you had a room to rent. Well, maybe I do, maybe I don't. You all alone? Yes, ma'am. My name is Pamela Wiley. Well, I don't know. People have to be real careful these days. It was Father McKinney at St. Mary's who recommended your place. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? I've got a nice room on the second floor. Fourteen dollars a week, and it includes breakfast and supper. You go out to work? I I, I will be. Uh, Where about? I I work at a company nearby. Uh Uh-huh. Do you work there long? Well, I actually, I I haven't started yet. I I just went for a job interview this morning, and I start work on Monday. Oh. What kind of a place is it? It's a printing company. It's called the Gramercy Printing Company on, on 29th Street. Hey, who's got the Fisher invoices? Come on, they need all them packing slips. Well, well, what happened to Bucktooth Betty? I- I'm sorry? Uh, the girl who used to work here, she get canned or something? Oh, I-, I-, I really wouldn't know. Oh, you're her replacement, is that it? Oh, I gotta tell you, honey, you're uh, some improvement. I suppose that's a compliment. Uh, let me give you a tip about this place. Now, now, don't be an eager beaver. Nobody likes a hard worker. They spoil it for the rest of us. <laughs> My name's Jimmy Presson. What's yours? Pamela Wiley. Well, give me a hand, honey. What? Now, oh! Now, don't worry. I'm not going to hurt you. Just looking for the evidence. Wedding rings, engagement rings, and so forth. Now, everything checks out okay. And I mean everything. May I have my hand back, please? Listen, you uh, live in town? and Not in the sticks or anything like that. I live in the city, yes. Well, maybe we could take in a movie tonight. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm busy tonight. Uh, I'm busy most nights. Look, if you're afraid to go out with me alone... I mean, if you've been hearing things from some of the chicks around here... Oh, no, I, I, I haven't heard anything. Well, I'll tell you what. There's going to be a little party on Friday night. Just a few friends of mine. Uh, some of them from the company. How about joining us? Well, I... I, I don't know if I can. Well, I'm making an effort, okay? I'll give you the address. It's 200 Rice Avenue, mm-hmm. apartment 4C. 4C. The name is Bess Mackin. Bess Mackin. Yeah, come around 9, okay? Yes, I, I'll try. Hey, honey, I'm sure glad you could make it. You're just what this party needs, baby. A new face and a real pretty one, too. I, uh... I don't know if I can stay very long. Oh, sure you can, honey. You can stay close to old Jimmy. I want to find out if it's true what they call you at the office. Oh? What do they call me? The Saint. Now, didn't you know? Saint Pamela. (laughs) I don't mind that, honey. Saints are okay. They have a way of uh, turning into sinners. Please, uh, if you don't mind, I'm awfully warm. Well, that's what I'm trying to do, baby. Warm you up. Please take your hand away. Come on, Saint Pamela. I know what you need. You need some fun and games, and I'm the guy who knows all the rules. No, stop! Uh, there you are. Well, hi, you best, honey. Uh, yeah, hey, I want you to meet somebody. I want you to meet uh, St. Pamela. St., this is my good friend, Bess Mackin. Oh, you bum. I saw what you were doing. Oh, just getting acquainted, that's all. Getting to know what a saint is like. Well, get out of here. This is my place, and I want you out of it. Oh, please, I-, I didn't mean to cause any trouble. I'll leave. No, 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 it's him I want out of here. Did you hear me, Jimmy? Get out. Sure, Bess, sure. I'm going. <laughs> I'll be over at the Silver Crown if any of you get lonely for me. <laughs> oh, that bum! That miserable bum! I don't know why all the men I meet are bums. I, I just don't understand. Oh, Bess, please, don't drink anymore. It's not helping. Oh, nothing helps. Nothing. <laughs> You know what life is, honey? 
I'll tell you what it is. It's like one of those wrap boxes under the Christmas tree in the department store. Just a fancy package. Nothing in it. Beth, <laughs> may I talk to you? Me? Well, the reason I stayed is... I wanted to ask you about yourself. Why would you care about me? Are you alone? Do you have any family? My mother's dead. And your father? That bum. He ought to be. Yes. Do you ever go to church? Me? Of course not. Even when you were a little girl? Oh, sure. When I was a kid. Oh, oh that Jimmy, that dirty stinker. Why do I do it? Why do I put up with it? Well, does he treat you badly? Oh, he doesn't treat me, period. He... You think he ever takes me anyplace? <laughs> if we go to a bar, who do you think buys the drinks? He says that's his idea of women's lib. Well, why do you do it then? Put up with him. He gave me one present in my whole life. One lousy present. <laughs> this piece of junk. Tip. Pretty bracelet. No, it's junk. I know where he got it. At that pawn shop around the corner from that cheap crook Wormer. A pawn shop? I bet he didn't even pay for it. I bet him and Wormer had a poker game. But does he go there often? Oh, he gets everything there except groceries. And does he ever sell things there? Oh, sure he does. Buy and sell, buy and sell every week. Hey, what do you want to know that for? Well, I, I was just interested, Bess. Just... Very interested. Well, Pamela Wiley, formerly Sister Pamela, seems to be on a crusade of her own. And like the crusaders before her, her goal is a sacred object. But the crusaders of the past had much trouble before they even reached their goal. Well, Pamela, we'll find out when I return with Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago News Radio 78. Pamela Wiley is taking one of the longest walks of her life. It's only a few blocks long. But her destination is the doorway of Wormer's Pawn Shop, just around the corner from 200 Rice Avenue. She pauses at the window, so covered in dust and grime that she cannot even see her reflection in the glass. It's just as well, because if she did, she would have seen the reflection of a very tense and frightened young lady. Wanna buy? What? You here to hug something or buy something, miss? Oh, a buy. Only reason I ask, it's a little early. I don't like to make appraisals this early, you know. I'm still half asleep. Oh, yes, I, I understand. Of course, I, I don't know if you have what I want. I, I'm looking for something ornamental for my apartment. Well, like what? I, I don't really know. Perhaps an interesting... Uh, lamp or something? Sorry, I... I don't carry lamps. Oh, well, some interesting... Oh, an antique, maybe. Well, that's the antique store you want, lady. This is a pawn shop. Well, do you have any religious objects? I got rosaries, jewelry, some pictures. You tell me what you want, I'll look for it. I'm not really sure. Maybe some sculpture would be nice. Sculpture? You mean like a statue? Yes. Oh, yes, that would be perfect. Do you have any, any religious statues, small ones? Uh, I'll go check in the back. You, you wait here. Sorry I had to keep you waiting. I, uh, I think I got a nice statue of St. Francis. St. Francis? Yeah, yeah, the one with the birds. Uh, come to think of it, it should be, uh, right over here. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. Oh. Is the kind of thing you mean? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, it is the kind of thing. It's a little beat up looking, but you could polish it up real nice and wouldn't look bad at all. Oh, yes, I, I wouldn't mind that. It's a real fine piece of work, you know. Don't think it's just junk. Oh, no, no. It ain't cheap, either. Oh, uh, how much? Well, uh, 
Well, on account of it's my first sale today, I'll tell you what. It's yours for 20 bucks. Well, um, it's a little more than I, I thought. Take um, it or leave it. Oh, I, it's all right, all right, I'll take it. Um, I think I have a $20 bill in my purse. Here, here, here. I'll help you with what that. What are you doing? Help you find that uh, 20 what? in your purse. You're spilling everything Yeah, out. yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm seeing what spills no, out, you know. Give it back but to all me. All I want to do is check, miss. In my business, we like to know who we're dealing with. Jimmy. You got here fast. I didn't even have time to button my shirt. All right, what did you find? What is it? Nothing in her purse. No gun, no identification. You sure she's a cop? I don't know, but she's been acting like a cop, all right. That's why I told you to call me if she showed up. All right, what about it, honey? You want to tell Jimmy all about it? Please, I, I just came in to buy something. You were pumping Bess after the party. She told me about it last night when she came to the Silver Crown. But I'm not with the police. I swear it. And why all oh, the questions, I, huh? Why all the nosing around? How you... Take it easy. I don't oh. want no trouble in here. She's something. She's got to be. Best told her I do business in your place, and now she shows up here the next morning. Don't that sound fishy to you? Oh, well, it's funny. Come it's on, funny. baby. Jim. Jimmy, don't. I, I was just the statue. Oh, I just wanted the statue. The what? I, I guess she used this thing. What's oh. the statue got to do with... Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. you you're right, Wormer. She's not a cop. Yeah, she's been acting like a cop, but that's not what she is. Please, please. Oh, please let me go. I, I didn't mean any harm. Please oh, let me no, go. no. Please. Sugar, you're not a cop at all. What you are is a nun. Are you nuts? It was in her suitcase. I snatched it from her at Union Station. Only... I mean, what's she doing here? Listen, I I'm not a nun anymore. I left the order over a month ago. I had to find the statue, don't you see? It was a gift to the convent, and it meant so much to them. I told you it was bad <laughs> luck robbing the nun. Shut up. I didn't come here to get you into trouble. I didn't want anything but the statue. I swear it. I oh, swear it. Oh, you went to a lot of trouble, too, didn't you? You took that job at Gramercy just to get next to me. Yes, that's true. Can you beat that? You ever hear anything like that, woman? Let me see that statue. Here. It's valuable, Jimmy, but, but only to the church, only for its meaning, that's all. Valuable? It's spiritual, I mean. It's not gold or anything, Jimmy, I swear it, please, it's only, it's only bronze. She's right, Jimmy, I know gold when I see it, it's a piece of junk. Give her the thing, let her go. You jerk. You believe that junk about spiritual value? This thing is old. Yeah, I should have seen it before. It's maybe hundreds of years old. So what? It may be worth a fortune. Huh? Hey, you know you could be right. Some of this religious stuff runs into thousands. Yeah, maybe we could make a deal with some art collector. Yeah, we could handle it through Mike the broker. He'll know what it's worth. You want to bring Mike in on this? Why not? It's his specialty. But what about the girl? That depends. Please, Jimmy. You don't have to sell it. I'll pay whatever you ask. Well, how much, honey? Think you could scrape up a couple of grand? If... If you'll give me time. <laughs> now, you see what I mean? It is worth plenty. Now, you uh, take the sister in the back room, Warmer, and we'll call Mike. We'll tell him to come to us. He won't do it. He'll come when he hears what we have. What happens if we make a deal? What about her? If the deal is good enough, it'll be worth anything. I don't know. It's been two hours. He ain't here yet. He'll be here. Stop worrying. How can I help it? Listen, Jimmy, that, that gag you got on the nun, you think it's okay? She can breathe. Can you breathe, sugar? <laughs> Just meditate, honey. You know how to do that, don't you? There he is. I told you he'd be here. Hey, Mike, we're in the back room. Well, well, well. This is a pretty picture. Who's the girl? She's a nun, Mike. No huh? kidding. <laughs> a nun? In those clothes? With a gag over her mouth? Ah, she started making too much noise. We had to keep her quiet. Listen, Mike, I got something that's going to knock your eyes out. Listen, on. my name isn't Mike Bresson. It's Mr. Downey to you. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, but uh, 
look at this, Mr. Downey, the statue. Well, we figured it was valuable on account of the nun. Went to so much trouble to find it. She even left the convent. Now, we want good terms, Mr. Downey. 50, now, wait 50. a minute. Not so fast. What happens to the girl after? Now, we'll take care of her. You can trust us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll bet I can. All right. Let's see the statue. All right, here. Look at it. You you had this on sale here? <laughs> I was going to sell it for 20 bucks. Can you imagine? No. No, I can't imagine it. <laughs> Since it's only worth two. What? You heard me melt it down for scrap. Maybe it's worth three, three and a half. The next time you guys handle junk, call a junk dealer, but don't call Mike. It's, it's got to be worth something. Look, don't teach me my business, Junior. But... Th- the nun, she went to so much trouble. Yeah, yeah, the nun. Don't you know about nuns? They don't understand about money. They're not smart like you and me. They'll kill themselves over a piece of junk just because it was blessed. Oh, you'd be amazed at the dumb things they do, all that working and praying and don't get a nickel out of it. Hey, what are you doing? I'm taking this gag out of her mouth here. There. There. You better not... Get her sore at you. She's liable to say a prayer and send you all to hell. <laughs> Come on, miss. I'm taking you out of this place. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but we'll, 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 wait a minute. we got to get something out of this. You said 20 bucks, didn't you? There. Consider yourself lucky. Let's go, sister. Oh, Mr. Downey. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to thank you. Uh, just take the statue where it belongs, uh, and say hello to God for me. And so Pamela Wiley returned to the Holy Name Convent, and this time she wasn't alone. St. Francis was with her. And you'll be pleased to know that she was in time to place the statue before the dimming eyes of Sister Lydia. Nice to have a happy ending for a change, isn't it? Despite the fact that the story you've just heard ended happily... We hope you won't continue to expect sweetness and light from the Radio Mystery Theater. Unfortunately, most of the people we deal with are not nearly as nice as Sister Pamela Wiley, or Big Mike Downey, for that matter. But if you don't mind spending some time with thieves, murderers, monsters, and other assorted villains, listen for us next time. Our cast included Rosemary Rice, Bryna Rayburn, Ann Petoniak, Jack Grimes, Joe Silver, and Ken Harvey. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. Sometimes you have to sit here and just look at me, and talk to me, and concentrate on me, as if I were a human being worthy of your time and your attention. Helen, you know that I love you. Mm, yeah, but that's not enough. You see, something's happening to me. What could be happening? I'm scared. I feel as if, as if I'm disappearing. Disappearing? Yes, as if I'm fading away, fading out. What does that mean? As if I've become nothing. But that's... I can prove it. There are times, many times, when... I look into a mirror, and I sort of become hazy, blurry, and then my image, my reflection, isn't there. It's just gone. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
CBS News is next on WBBM Chicago News Radio 78.